Okay, here we go on the Up and Adam show. We are in a place unknown. We're doing something very fun with FanDuel family. And apparently here, here's our guest for the first segment. Gronk, everybody. A little hey, walk on music. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> We're in New Jersey. Shooting <laughs> commercial. <laughs> Here we're on air, Crump. Yes, hey doing? everyone, we're live. Welcome to my show. This yes. is my team, Alex and Danielle. Yes, hello team. How you Crump doing? Show. Nice Crump. to meet you guys. Everyone's here. We can't. I don't think we can tell people what exactly we're doing. No, we're just you know on the on the set right now. Yeah, um, somewhere something. on the East Coast. Kind of fun. Yes, the best coast, I think. The yeah. East Coast. It's kind of fun, and uh, we're shooting a commercial. We can say that. You look pretty dapper. Yes, thank you. I just, they just dressed me up, which was great. I just sit down in the chair. They put my they don't put my pants on for me though. But once I put my pants on and I put my shirt on, then they put the jacket on for me and I just sit there. They do my hair, put a little bit of makeup yeah. on. I tell them never too much makeup. Never I just like much. just a couple a dabs and then uh, they make you look good and then I'm ready to go. You're ready to go. So we are shooting something for FanDuel, of course. We've got a lot of fun going on. We got the NBA, we have there's a play-in game tonight. There's baseball that started. We're gonna get into a little bit of that. And you've been to the Derby. I've never been. Do you have any advice for me? No, I don't have like a Tom Brady police escort, but what, yes. what, what well, what's yeah, the way yeah. to go? Yeah, I mean, that is the best that advice. The best get, get that yeah. police escort uh -huh. just so you can get around, or else it's gonna take one hour just to get into the mm -hmm. arena. Or what what are uh, horse racing arenas called? Are they oh, called no, arenas? No, no. You right yeah i did have a horse it actually ran in the belmont before but we're we're going to talk about that when we get closer to the kentucky derby <laughs> right, in a couple you're the weeks. boss but uh yeah the kentucky derby i would just say be ready for um a good time yeah. be ready for um a big cluster everyone's on top of each other yeah. you know everyone's in the stands wherever you are standing up if you're in a suite it's just just a cluster of people just on top of people and uh get ready to bet it makes it a lot more fun it makes yeah. the race that much more interesting make sure to put a bet on the line you know bet responsibly that's very Over important sports yeah, don't put your whole whole bank account on on the line or your check that week just make a nice responsible bet and uh it makes the race that much better Crock, how much did you bet on the derby when you went you know, I didn't even bet at the Derby. You yeah. didn't? No, I, I didn't. How much money is yeah. the appropriate Gronk amount of money I mean, with you? I mean, you're right. I would say I should have made a bet. Um, that's why I, I would didn't have as good of a time that I could have had. Yeah. I would have had the best time ever if I made a bet. Like what sure. Walker did. Yeah, exactly. Everyone else, I made a bet. They were all into it. I was kind of there with Julian, yeah. with Danny. We were just going crazy, you know, drinking a lot of beers. Yeah. Uh, sweating it all out when we got the practice that following Monday, Coach Belichick was like, I saw you guys. Is that true? Yeah. He's like, oh, and it's then we're so running routes, sweat, sweating all over the place. He's like, get that booze out of you guys. And uh, he yeah, he did say that. It was great. Weird. Yeah. And I was like, that. watch this route. Yeah. yeah and you did it. You yeah. It but uh, make, make sure you bet. Make sure you bet on the horse and it just makes it that much better. We'll get into your horse that you had ownership of. I don't know if you still do. We'll get into that next week. All There's right. NFL storylines going on though. At Odell yes. signs big deal 13 million something bonus yes. crazy he's 18 million worth up to that for one year with Baltimore when that deal went through what do you think I was actually very surprised that he went to Baltimore it was like you know a home run that came out of nowhere like no one everyone I was very surprised I feel like everyone was surprised that everyone was talking about the Jets or going to Buffalo um, or just possibly going back to the Giants and all of a sudden kaboom he went he went to Baltimore to tell you the truth I think that was the best play as well once it happened. You know, I kind of studied it, kind of, you know, went back and, and thought about the, the whole process and everything. And what a fit that is. I believe, like I said, Lamar Jackson is going to be staying in Baltimore. He needs a number one wide receiver. They got a couple good wide receivers, but they don't have a number one. So Odell's going to shine right from the beginning. I think the money is very fair as well. There's top players getting $30 million. Got 11. The yeah. top wide receiver. He's getting 18. Yes. He didn't play last year. Yeah, but I think it's fair. It's Odell. I mean, he's going to have a great year. He's been working hard. He had a great year before that. That's why having a little, a little a bit amount in the centers is also very um, is a very good deal for both sides. But um, I think he's going to go out. He's going to perform. And I think it's a great fitty. A uh, great fitting for a the great city. Fitty. Like <laughs> great that. fitty. Great fitty for the city of Baltimore. And also, I'm getting I'm getting a little crazy. I just I just shot, so I'm a little on top of my game okay. right now. I'm, I'm my brain is turning okay. right now. Tell me also what. All right, and uh, it's a great fitty for the city of Baltimore Fitt. and Fitty's for the Baltimore the Ravens organization and for 
for Lamar Jackson. Does this mean Lamar is going to show up? Because they seem they're at a standstill with the deal. He wants the guaranteed money. But they said, you know what? We don't know what's going on here, but we're going to bring you the wide receiver that you want and deserve. A true number one, Rashad Bateman there. They might even draft another guy. They have the 22nd pick in the first round. They might take a Zay Flowers, a Jordan Addison, something like that, adding more wide receivers to try to make Lamar happy. You know this game. You know the business side of it. Does this make you feel better if you're a Ravens fan in the city with the fitty about Lamar showing up and playing this year and beyond? Yeah, I, I, I believe that the Baltimore Ravens fans should feel a lot better about it, that Lamar Jackson will show up. I mean, Odell and Lamar, they've been posting pictures of them on FaceTime talking to each other and everything. And they were at Live the other yes, night. Yes, and Live the other night. I mean, they're going, they're turning up on a Sunday. Uh that's what they do. So I'm sure that Lamar will be back. I don't think you should worry about it. I don't think the Baltimore Raven fans should worry about it. He's going to be back as a Raven, and they're going to have an excellent year, I feel like. I have Chandler Parsons on the show here in a little bit. NBA guy, he was telling this great story about Kobe and about uh, a, a check at a club and how much the bill was, and it was $22,000 or something. What is the highest yes. club bill wow. you've ever seen with your actual eyes right. live or, or, or wherever else? All right, well, the highest club bill I ever, I've ever had, which I thought was out of control, it was like two hours, and it was at XS in Vegas one night. It was $10,000. $10,000 yes, for my, two hours? Yes, for like two, three hours there. You That's know, just, low. Just, yeah, it, it is. I mean, that was like nine years ago as well. Yeah. So that's actually a lot of money like nine years ago. But also what you were talking about when Kobe was probably out, that was even probably longer than me. And that was 22 grand. It gets expensive going out, you know, doing the nightlife. Yeah. So that's why that's why I, that's why I started hosting the parties. Is that, is yeah. that right? You started yeah. hosting the parties for that reason. And now Kelsey has this thing going on too. We're going to get to Kelsey in a little bit, but I do want to talk about this. You were saying you're surprised to see Odell go to Baltimore. I was surprised that yesterday I saw that you told TMZ that you're done. Like the doors now. Yes. Yes. Like done, yes. done. Yes. Yes. I told him I'm done. Done. Uh, You've told hap- everyone happily done, retired. Done. Yeah, I'm done. And you done. retired, but the doors. We, we talked oh. about this little window. It's over. I mean, I would just say, yeah. I would just say that like it, it's like deadbolt at the door, and like there's someone just pounding at the door, and like the chance of someone breaking the door down, like you got to have like the incredible hawk come through to break that door. Down. But, but if, in order but, to open but if it up marvel yeah. came through they could get if thor came by it, he it would, would have to come by it. yeah thor would have to come by so, so i, so I don't know if, i don't know the chance of that happening so did something happen in the last couple of months where you feel more happy in your retirement yeah, i've been shooting a couple commercials you know <laughs> acting a little bit on the commercials i'm a commercial actor you know remembering <laughs> some lines it's been just fun doing that, like like doing that type of stuff. You know what else is going to be fun this weekend, right? You're going to Arizona. It's yes. you and the great Chris Gronkowski. Yes. You guys are coaching or doing what for the spring game? Uh, yes, we're coaching. So I'm going to be coaching one of the teams because uh, they split it up like A team, B team, or yeah. red and blue team because they're, they're facing each other um, when it's when it's college well, games. Well, let's listen to Chris. Let's listen to Chris uh, explain what's going to happen. Chris, take it away. So what should the loser of this game have to do? Brother Rob and I are going back to Arizona. We're coaching the spring game, and there's got to be something on the line. So we just got off a call with TMZ, and Rob suggested that the loser had to chug 15. Waters. You got any other better ideas? Comment below. <laughs> 15 waters. What do you make of that? Yes. Is that really your idea? <laughs> yes, it was my idea because that's what we used to do back in college. You know, yeah. you, you get the back when you were young and you get the water bong and you put the water in it and then you pound it down just to make sure you're super hydrated and get you hydrated really, really quick. It gets you more hydrated faster and more quality than an actual IV as well. So 15 waters, whoever loses. Yeah. Yep, How think. many waters does it take to get you feeling really loose? Probably, 15 would kill a normal person. Yeah, back, I mean, of water. back in the day, I mean, I feel like any college kid can really pound 15 waters. 15 waters? Yeah, especially a college football player, especially mm-hmm. the lineman. Right. But uh, it took me about, it takes up probably nowadays, probably like four to get me feeling really good. So I'm I'm a little scared. I don't want to lose because I don't want to pump 15 waters. Yeah, 15 waters is something we'd like you to do on our show, but that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about Travis Kelsey here. Yeah, his first pitch, and you had a first pitch too for the Red Sox, right? Yes, I had a first pitch, oh. yes, for the Red Sox. We'll get to that. Yeah. It was kind of down the line. Bro. Yeah, it was right down the middle. It, it, I would tell you this, Big Poppy would have probably hit it right over the great wall. I'm sure he would. But let's take a look at some of these. Did you see Travis Kelsey's pitch? Yes, I did. Uh, I'm actually surprised, you know, how terrible he did. I thought he was going to put it right down the middle. But it, he kind of, like, just chucked it, just gunned it right into the ground. You think he was nervous? What I don't know. He had Yeah, I don't know. I don't Because he has that. power. You see that power. 
I'm not really sure what happened. We would have to talk to him. Pitching Ninja did a side-by-side comparison of his pitch and a Gronk spike of yours, because it kind of looks similar. How would you rate the form here on his? It actually looks very similar. I would give him a a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10? We're talking about a Gronk spike. Yeah, look at that. Let's go look at some more pictures here. Nick Sirianni, of course, head coach of the Eagles. He was at the Phillies game this past Friday, and here it is. Now, he misses the plate a little bit. He's also standing in front of the mound. What do you make of this? Uh, he's got to back up. I mean, come on now. You got to back up. You got to throw from the mouth. I mean, it, like if you're like what a George Bush when he coming out in the wheelchair, you're allowed to throw in front of the mouth. Oh but this isn't George Bush coming out in a wheelchair. You're a freaking uh, head you're coach, a, and head coach, coach. and you're a young head coach. And he's like one of the guys who talks to his players. Yes, and, and, like, and fights yeah. him up and has enough energy, has energy every single day, and he's throwing it in front of the mound. You got to back up. That's Dan the, Campbell's standing on the mound. Yeah, exactly. Dan Campbell is right. actually standing at second base and throwing the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> How about Cavante Turp? Okay, right down the middle. Let's take a look at this one. Here he is. This is a returner, and he it was the Rangers last night. That's pretty good. Uh, it is. I mean, you can do a backflip. Backflip. All right, we got another problem. He has to throw it from the mound, but just doing that backflip, that's what made the pitch. That's that's a great first It pitch. makes up for How about Yeah, this? it makes up for the pitch. It's comedian Burt Kreischer. He was in Cleveland. This is the day after Kelsey. So he had no big shoes to fill because Kelsey just woofed it. And then he went with a shirtless approach. Which I get something that Burt Kreischer uh, has an affinity for doing. So he takes his shirt off. Style points for this, potentially? Yeah. Oh boy. Definitely. This is what I, this is what I like to see. This is what you like to see. All right. Yes. Look All at right. that body. A nice dad bod. He's got to throw out a nice pitch. What happened? I didn't really see it. I didn't really did see it. Did it bounce? Too small. I don't know. Yes. Somebody in the control room, tell us. Tell us what he did. Did it bounce? That bounces it. Yeah. Yeah. It's- yeah. But he he he's allowed to bounce it. Yeah. It's Bert. Yeah. And he's got uh, style points. Here's, yeah. a, here's the last Bert, one. That Bert's going in all about style. It doesn't matter what type of pitch he throws. So, <laughs> Bert, good job. Especially and with, yep. Our guy, Steve Aoki. Oh, uh, Steve Aoki. Yeah, he had, oh, look man. At this. Now, he throws cakes with his left hand. This one was a wild. Yes, he does. I don't know. Not a, You know, Steve Aoki, he usually only goes deep. So, that's why he threw it over the catcher. It was okay. too short of a pass for him. Every time he throws that cake, especially when we watch it, it's a deep pass. So he thought, you know, it was Odell running down the seam. So oh, that's why it. he chucked the ball like that. And that's why he can be a, a NFL quarterback as well. Do you, remember, okay. do you remember your 2016 Red Sox pitch? What do you remember about that day in this moment? Uh, I remember I kind of just chucked a little bit. It was kind of like a 70 mile per hour fastball right down the middle. Yeah, I Were went through the whole motion. Boom, baby. Yeah, that would have been a, that would have been smacked out of the park. This is so on Gronk. It hurts. I expect. In fact, you know, we saw the Chrysler, we saw no, there's, you, you did this and it's not memorable. Yeah, but I look pretty gangsta up there. Yeah. Around, you know? Yeah. The tongue's hanging out. So That's not did, bad. You did have your, maybe Yeah, you it, it was kind of like a flick too. Yeah. Flick of the wrist. So it wasn't like I gave you. You did it with effort. such ease. Yeah, with, with ease. <laughs> I mean, you, what would have been more grunt like what you're looking for is like a knuckleball or something. Just something or, crazy. Yeah, a knuckleball. And uh, I actually did. My brother played for the Whistler Tornadoes, uh, which is like an hour away from Boston, mm-hmm. independent league. And I had threw out a first pitch, actually. It was my rookie year when I was with the Patriots, and I threw a knuckleball, and the thing knuckled all over the place. So I should have thrown another knuckleball. No, I think you'll have a chance to do it again. Yeah. Did you drink some waters after that game? Yeah, I did. After that pitch? Yeah. Gronk, you're the best. All right, we're doing some top secret business here, even though we kind of already told you what we're doing, but hopefully you didn't put it all together because Suze will kill us. It's really hot in here. You've got more lines. And we'll have Taylor Parsons is on the show. Michael Mayer of Notre Dame. We're going to talk about him. Oh, Notre right. Dame. Right. Tight end. Baby, they rule the field. Be- in a search for better lighting, I've made my way to the front of the trailer. My team back here waiting, doing their thing. We had Gronk on the show. NBA great Chandler Parsons is here. And this is everyone's biggest fear, me. Chris McGullin's like, hi, we're on the show. It's fine. Everyone's okay. We have an awesome guest. And one of my favorite guys that I've talked about a lot on the program is here. And he's coming off an incredible senior season, right? Leads the entire nation in touchdowns. The entire nation in touchdowns in his final game at Tulane. He was the MVP in uh, the Cotton Bowl. Their win over USC. Please welcome running back Tajay Spears. Tajay, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me. Good, I'm really good. 
It's a little crazy right now. Gronk just left the trailer. He said it was too hot, but we are here. We're having a lot of fun. And I know this is a big week for you. Big weekend. Uh, We are talking about what I have learned about, which is the Ponchatoula Strawberry Festival in your hometown, my friend. So tell me about what it was like growing up uh, in Louisiana and specifically in Ponchatoula. Um, it was it was really great. Um, small little town. I don't know how many people we hold, but it's it's a small little town. Like you said, it's a weekend of the Strawberry Festival. Um, and I was telling one of my my friends like, dang, this is really the highlight of our year, Strawberry Festival. It go on for like three days, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. A lot of festivities, and we got a big uh, parade Saturday morning. And like, I'm I'm gonna have my own float. Me and my family we're gonna be doing a lot of a lot of different stuff. So it's gonna be it's gonna be really really fun. What do you mean you're getting your own float? Like my, like I got, I got my own float. So like you know, how like um, parade, like in a parade, you see like floats and stuff. I got my own float. It's just gonna be me and my family. And uh, shout out to my sister in law for putting it together for me. That's amazing. What do you wear to the strawberry festival? Three days. It's like Coachella. Everyone's going to Coachella. These idiots. I want to go to the strawberry festival. Come on, you can wear whatever you want to wear because it's gonna be like you know we in Louisiana, so it's gonna be like really really hot. So then, then it's about to rain, so it's going to be so, like, when the rain clear up, it's going to be, like, so, so hot. So you can wear whatever. I think I'm going to uh, do, like, three different outfits, but uh, I'm not too big on it for real. Well, you're big on strawberries, you're big on your hometown, and you're big on playing football. And you went to play at Tulane. Your 2022 team accomplished the greatest single season turnaround in all college football history. You went from two and 10 to 12 and two. What is the biggest reason? Like the one reason you guys were able to get it together and turn it around. Um, accountability. And I say that from the top to the bottom, everybody held up, everybody accountable. We all was pulling in the same direction. We all wanted the same end goal. So accountability was the biggest reason uh, for this time around. Uh, Well, we love to hear that. I'm sure that's going to carry on to one of 32 teams that are lucky enough to have you on their squad and you finished your college career. You really put a stamp on it. And I like that you ended on the highest of high notes, Tajay. You crushed USC and you said bye to Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams in the Cotton Bowl, 46 to 45. Such a dominating performance. And if you look at the numbers, it was insane, right? Everything that you were able to do four rushing touchdowns. How important was that victory for you? on this football journey, beating a powerhouse school like USC and ready to go play on the bigger stage of the NFL? It's like, um, I kind of like took myself out the equation and um, just put it into the like history of the school. Like we never did, we never did something like that at Tulane. So like, that's what we prided the whole week on. Like just, just making sure we live in the moment, make sure they like, we write down history. Like coach even said like, man, we we win this game, we're gonna go down greatest team in Tulane history. So like that was a that was a mindset the whole year and that was a mindset definitely coming into that game and coming out of out of that game. So it just want it was like um I remember like probably like two, three years ago, like an upper class and he was like, dang Tajay, how you want me to remember? Like like how we remember like Cotton Bowl champions, uh, like yeah. MVP of the Cotton Bowl, like that's that's you know that's something that they can't ever take from you. That's that's gonna go down forever. They can never take it from you but you didn't fall off there. It wasn't some shining moment and then it went away because you said it changed something, right? And it was obvious. You took that momentum. And trust me, I've covered this game on the NFL level for over 10 years. I don't really watch the college game. I'm not as plugged in, but your name is the name that I was hearing towards the end of your senior season and into this one. And I know that all the most important eyes in my business are on the senior bowl. That's what matters. What are what are guys like, not even in the game, the week leading into practice and you crushed it on every level. And last week we were talking about this rep that you had that week. Will you please talk me and every NFL fan through this play? It's just like an option route. He took the, uh, he took the uh, inside away from me. Uh, he was playing outside, left. he's just outside right here, playing outside left. He about to jump in just a little whip route, whip back in. It ain't, it ain't nothing too special. It ain't nothing too special. Oh my gosh. I'm running back needing teams are needing you there. So I want you to know uh, that we love you. We obviously made the forte comparisons a little bit just because of the, you know, the school and, you know, where running backs are going in the draft. But is there a running back in the NFL that you sort of look at and say, I like how he moves. I want to be like him and I model my game after him. Oh, not necessarily, but uh, I got two guys that I really like on. Um... Aaron, Aaron Jones and Alvin Kamara. I like. I really like those guys. But like me, just sitting there, like saying, like, "I'm a model my game after like, somebody." Like, uh, but those two guys, I really, really like. I really like. The way. I, I like everything that they do when it comes to on the field. 
I, I, you know, I know that you, you know, you, you had to grow up knowing and loving Reggie Bush there too. So have you had a chance to meet any of those guys? Like you're there, you're in New Orleans. Have you met Alvin Kamara? No, nah, like we probably like reached, reached out to each other, like text messages, text, like texting, but like, nah, not meeting nobody. Um, I want to meet Reggie Bush though. Cause like, like I said, like um, my first year playing football, I got 25. He was my favorite player at the time. I used to like, I used to like him a lot. So that's why you had the 25, got it. Because I was thinking about Matt Forte and the reason I brought him up, he's obviously a Tulane alum. Uh, and I think that you will be the first player from Tulane to go in the first three rounds of the draft since Forte did it back in 2008. I'm a big Bears fan and he had a great career wearing that number 22. You wore 22, uh, any connection there? Um, no, not, not, not too much. I just try, um, I just try to make my own path in life. But I don't really... Like I said, like, you know, I don't really focus on the comparison. I'm trying to, you know, live one day at a time and be with my feet at. How do you feel about your pro day? All 32 teams were there. They all showed up. You were dealing with an injury. You didn't run the 40 at the combine. Uh, getting that 4-4 time, how important was that to you? Um, it was it was important. It was important to show, the, uh, show all 32 teams that I can run fast. That was, that was probably the biggest question coming from the combine. Like, why are you run? Um, is he fast? So, like, uh, just checking that box. It's all about just just take just checking the box on, along the, uh, along this journey. That's all it's about. All right, we're gonna get to know you a little bit better and let all the NFL fans get to know you a little better. And we're gonna give a minute on the clock and I'm gonna ask you and bang through as many questions as possible. Okay, you ready? Oh man, yeah, I'm ready. All right, <laughs> who would you love if you could pick anybody to headline Coachella? Who would you pick? Say it again. If you could pick anybody to headline Coachella. Which musical act would you pick? What is that? It's like a big music festival. I love that you don't know what it is because you're the best. I'm immediately a fan of you. Like, um... Oh, Kevin uh, Gates. Kevin yeah? Gates. Kevin Gates. Okay, great. Uh, the dream car that you want to own someday. Um, uh, a Bugatti. A Bugatti. Okay. Best preparation for eating strawberries or best way to eat strawberries. Best way to eat strawberries is... With, um, with cheesecake. With cheesecake. And that's, you're a man after my own heart here. Uh, is there a TV show or a show that you're streaming right now that you love? Uh, Sanford and Son. It's like so old. You're watching, wait, hold on. Hold on. Stop the clock. You're just, you're just casually watching episodes that you're binge watching Sanford and Sons? What? It is. That's, that's all I do. Like Sanford and Son and Martin. That's all I watch. <laughs> Martin, I mean, damn, Gina is one of my favorite shows ever. But not you're too young for this, but it would be on. And then the second half hour was Living Single with Queen Latifah. And it was amazing. It was like the best hour of TV back in the 90s, back in the day. Okay, Sanford and Sons. I love that. Uh, best food spot in New Orleans. Let's say I'm there for one hour. Where am I going? One hour. That's a good question. Oh, New Orleans, uh, New Orleans Food and Spirit. New Orleans food and spirit. I'm going to write that down here. Favorite NFL player of all time. Favorite NFL player of all time. Um, I really like Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. Tasha, I'm beeping. We got to go. You're going too slow. Let's do this. All right. Favorite video game. Favorite video game, GTA. Uh, best Tulane football player ever. Best Tulane football player ever, Matt Forte. Class, how they speak. Hey, come on. Favorite comedian. <laughs> favorite favorite comedian? comedian? I know. Oh, man, man, man. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. That's a Chris hard one. Rock? Oh, Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac. Oh, rest in peace, Bernie Mac. We love you. You have an old soul. My goodness. And your favorite superhero. My favorite superhero. Dang, I don't get into superheroes, but I like the Hulk. Is he a good, is he a good one? The Hulk? I think so. What are you into outside of Sanford and Sons then? You don't like Coachella. You don't like, like, what are you into? Do you watch, do you watch, do you watch, do you watch Power? I watch, but now isn't Power like a bunch of different things with Ghost and like all those different, but Power was like yeah, the OG yeah. one, right? Like that's, that's like, um, that's when I'm, that's when I'm watching right now. I'm watching, uh, like, what it is, like Ghost Book 3. That's what I'm watching right now. Like that one, there's too many of them for me, I think. Power, who's the original cast? Is Power- um, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta bench watch that. 
I got to binge watch Power. Okay, I'm going to do that. I thought, why don't I think, what? yeah, I had the wrong show in mind. Okay, okay, okay. I met Omari, though. What show? Oh, I met did? Omari Hardwick. Is yeah, he's amazing. I interviewed oh, him once. He's great. I'm a big fan. All right, so what's your favorite show before we leave? Oh, my gosh. Right now, on, you're it's, you're you're it's, this, <laughs> it's this song called or this uh, uh, show called Succession and it's kind of like Power and it's kind of like Billions and it's on HBO and it's but it's a lot it's too many you're, you're too focused on ball right now but maybe next offseason after you've won Offensive Rookie of the Year you can catch up on that how does that feel? CK I like you I like you a lot I it's like you Taji <laughs> All right, we will see you at the draft. I'm telling you, first three rounds, Matt Forte. Don't tell, I love Matt Forte. I grew up watching it. I grew up watching those thousand yard seasons. You're the best player out of two lane coming to an NFL team year. You will be back with Chandler Parsons as I am melting in this car. I am literally melting. I'm Welcome back to Up and Adams. I'm looking at this Coachella lineup. I'm, am I this not cool? Like who is? Porter Robinson, who who are Underworld? Who are these groups? What happened to Pearl Jam and uh, My Morning Jacket? I'm coming to you live from our trailer, shooting a commercial with Gronk today. Uh, we had Gronk on the show. We just met Tajay Spears, who's coming to an NFL backfield near you. These idiots let me drive this RV around, so I'm going to get a ticket here in Newark, New Jersey, where I'm sure our next guest dreams he could be right now. Let's talk to him. He's a, a nine-year, I believe, NBA veteran, uh, and one of the only guests we've ever had on the show that's taller than our first guest, Rob Gronkowski, Chandler Parsons. Good morning. Good day. Hey, good morning. How you doing, Kay? I'm so good. It's so good to see you. And you had run it back today, so you're, I'm, I'm sure, all ready to talk NBA with me, huh? Yeah, I am holding down your chair right now while you are in the trailer in Newark. I got you. Wait, you're in, I forgot yeah. about this. You're in LA. What do you think of the new studio? It's awesome, the right? The new studio is sick. I just, I moved kind of, I, I don't live necessarily close, but coming here this early, at least I beat the traffic coming here. But the studio, oh, the so studio is dope. I love it. I'm so glad you got to be there with everybody in persons. Uh, person, get per Parsons, persons, sure. Give uh, Beetle yeah. and Thompson and Company my love. Uh, listen, we're kind of an NFL show. You're an NBA guy, so I figured we could start this by breaking down Coachella because I hear <laughs> that you are going. To, and what am I missing? I, I, what is going to happen? Like I've never been ever. You've never been. No. So you know what? This is it's when I played. I obviously couldn't go. This is during the playoffs. But I've now gone the last three years, and it's fun. You know, I'm 34 now, like so I don't really even go to the festival. And this year, the lineup is kind of a little janky. I don't really, I don't even recognize a lot of the names. But you know what? It's a, it's a weekend where you get to wear pants like that and dress up, and you walk around this big festival, and you might drink a little bit and listen to music and just kind of party with your friends. This year, I'm kind of going it. just to play golf and hang. Oh, see, I love that. It's a very 34-year-old way to do exactly. it, and I appreciate looking at the lineup, and I was like, huh? Like, a bad, after Bad Bunny, you sort of lose me. Yeah. Um, but here, I was thinking about this, and here's the lineup. Um, I want to ask you, you are, what are you, like 6'10"-ish? Six, six, yeah. Okay, there's like a rule of the universe that whenever I'm at a concert and I'm five feet tall and this just happened, I went to see Adele in Vegas and everyone, and I had great seats too. I was elevated. Everyone's there. And then literally like the Tony Soprano big guy sits right in front of me and I can't see the stage. Yeah. So you're, it happens at every freaking concert that I go to you being 6'10 in a crowd like that. Do you think about it? Do you understand that you're casting a shadow and making it a horrible day for tons yeah. of people behind you? I do. It's a, and it's a tough. It's a tough life, Kay. I, I literally in a movie theater, or I went and saw if I'm at a concert or something like Coachella. It's tough, and you try and be a, you try and be as courteous as possible. But I, there's there's not like there's seats in this field either, so I have to stand up, which makes it a real problem for the people behind me. But there's always the guys too that put the girls on the shoulder. That's even more offensive than me standing in front of you, if you ask me. Yeah, because that's a choice. You that, don't have yeah, a choice. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah. Yeah, but do you go? God, going on your shoulders would be like a would be like a ride at Six Flags Great America. Like <laughs> yeah. that would be absolutely a harrowing, harrowing experience for any woman who wants to, you know, <sighs> take care of that adventure. But do you go? Like, do you, like, because you can't just stand in the back, right? Like, I want to be as close to the action as possible. But you doing that is that greedy? Like, should you morally 
go stand in the back of Coachella while Bad Bunny's doing his thing. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't I don't think I should have to worsen my my view and my standpoint based off my hype. I will try and kind of not go to the back, but I'll try and kind of go off to the side and not obstruct the, the entire stage with my big head. Yeah, it's very courteous of you at 610. Uh, yeah. Do you have any Coachella stories? I love listening to you on podcasts. I was listening to you tell that Kobe story about you at the club and the $22,000 uh, tab because you're a great storyteller. Any fun moments at Coachella? Yeah, you know what? Coachella is, like I said, it's basically an excuse of a weekend where you can try things and you drink a little bit too much and you can wear whatever you want and there's no judgment and it's just fun. It's like you're like a kid at recess basically running around this field and depending on who the artists are that weekend, it can be really fun. Like you said, this year, I'm not really jazzed up to see anybody. Frank Ocean on Sunday, I guess, would be cool. Yeah. Gorillas, they like once they play like one or two songs, I think then I'm kind of over that. But it's gotten to be such a thing, and it's so crowded. And I don't know if it's because I've gotten older. I've been there before, but it is tough to move around. Um, but it, it really is a blast. If you haven't gone, you should definitely go. Not this year, because, again, the music kind of sucks this year. You should go next year for sure. I'll go back next year. You like DJs, though. Who would you want to be in, what is it, the Dew Tent or whatever? Who would you want to see take over? Give you me know, DJ you I love the Chainsmokers. I love Marshmallow. Those are my guys. I, I see them all the time in Vegas. But, again, they, they're, I don't know how, I looked at that list, the flyer that you put up there. I don't know 90% of these group names. It's, yeah, it'll it'll be fun either way, though. So we'll see pictures of you, I'm sure. Like, and that's what sucks about you, too. You can't blend in with the crowd. Like, sometimes you're at something and you see and you look over and you're like, oh, shit, Justin Bieber is standing right there, but he's blends in, kind of. Yeah. But you can. It's like Gronk. You guys can't go anywhere. Yeah, I can't just throw glasses on and, and hide a, a seven-foot body. So it's definitely a, it's a little recognizable out there. But again, it's everyone's kind of on the, the same wave and it's it's fun. So everyone's on psychedelics is what you're saying. That's where I was getting at. I just, it's a family show. <laughs> okay, you're fresh off Run It Back. I want to get some NBA stuff out of you. Uh, Shams kind of keeps me in the loop. I try to watch Run It Back when I can. But tell me, we're going to go through these as quick as possible, rapid fire style. Let's put a minute on the clock, actually, producers. Whoa. And give me right now, best team in the NBA. Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, oh Giannis. Okay, uh, how good are the Lakers? Lakers are pretty good. It's crazy how far they've come from the trade deadline to where they are now. They could advance in the playoffs. Woo, best matchup in the first round. Oof, I like the Knicks versus the Cavs. Just I think that's the most competitive matchup that could go seven games. I like that quickly, kid. I've been to one NBA game in three years and it was in Julius Randle scored a billion points against the Timberwolves. Okay, yeah. best chance of first round upset. Best chance of what? A first round upset. The Lakers. I think the Lakers can beat the Memphis Grizzlies if they get that seven seed. Wow, that's kind of polarizing. Oh, and here. the now, Golden State Warriors, I think, will beat the Sacramento Kings. That's a six versus three seed. There we go. Upset special. One team I should root for in the playoffs. Who do we like? Oof. I mean, I think you should root for the Philadelphia 76ers. 76ers? Yeah, like, why not? Maybe back they back. haven't, like, Joel is probably going to be the MVP. James Harden hasn't won a championship. It'll be a fun team. And they're fun to watch. All right. I liked him better when Michael Rubin owned him. Okay, player who doesn't get enough love. I think it's Joel Embiid. I think he's the MVP this year, and I think we keep trying to create this these reasons why he's not. How about a player who gets too much love? The guy that's the runner-up MVP, Jokic. He's already got it two years in a row. I think if he gets it a third time, it's, it's, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. Okay, a lot of people yeah. have that opinion, it sounds like. Team that would have the most success as a team in the NFL? Whoa. Um, probably like the Boston well, Celtics or the Miami Heat. They're like a big, physical, tough team that kind of defends. I think they one. Oh, uh, Boston. The I like Boston okay. Celtics. They're scrappy. Okay, I like that. The most physical team. Got it. And who wins the NBA championship? I got to go with the Bucs. They're the best team all year long. The Eastern Conference is better than the Western Conference. So I think whoever comes out of there wins it all, and it's going to be the Bucs. I love that. We've got these play-in games tonight, but I want to talk about this drama. Listen, if something happens in the NBA, Chandler, and it makes it onto my Twitter timeline, it's big. Yeah. It's huge. It's dramatic. This Timberwolves Spurs game, right? You got Jaden McDaniels punches the wall. Then they have the squabble that we're seeing here with Gobert and Kyle Anderson. This was probably the craziest thing I've ever seen in the NBA. What did you make of it? 
I mean, it, it's, it is pretty crazy. And the Draymond Green thing earlier in the year in practice where the video surfaced, it, it's a big deal. This being live during a game, you know, on TV in front of thousands of fans at your home arena, I've never seen this before. I've had teammates get in arguments. I've had teammates fight. I've, had, I've seen punches thrown in the locker room. Never like this where all eyes and all cameras are on them. So this is tough, and it also comes at the worst time ever, right? This team is playing the Lakers. They're trying to get into that, you know, the 7-8 the, the seed. And now they're going into this game tonight super shorthanded because they suspended Rudy Gobert. And then you see McDaniels punch the... You know the 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 wall leaving the leaving the game as well, and those are two critical pieces to their team. And those are two guys that they really need for this matchup against the Lakers. So, I've never seen anything like this. Again, I saw a pretty pretty good fight in a locker room in Memphis one time, but never during a game. This was pretty wild. And knowing Kyle Anderson, Rudy Gobert, they're very uncharacteristic because they're both super yeah. nice dudes. What what was the fight about uh, in the Memphis locker room? You know what's crazy? Rudy Gobert and and. Kyle Anderson are very nice kids. The two dudes that fought in Memphis were this guy Garrett Temple and Omri Caspi, who are even nicer dudes than, than these two. And I don't know, it was just like something that just you know trickled over from practice or whatever. But they they were they were going at it. They were going at it. What's the closest you've ever felt? And you obviously never showed it on the court. But what's like the most angry where you thought I might actually lose control here, but it didn't happen. Uh, see, I'm, I never really beefed with like my teammates like that. I'd get into it with another player. I'd get into it with the refs. I've got into it with a fan, like things like that. But I'm a pretty even keel guy that I, I, I never really got into close things. I got in a fight in college one time with a teammate, but like nothing, nothing like this. Uh, you don't fight with Travis Kelsey. That's what I hear. I hear you two are buds, your boys, you're playing some golf later this uh, off season or whatever. How did you two become friends? Uh, yeah, we met a couple years ago in a golf tournament and we just kind of got matched up and he's an awesome dude. We are very, very similar, you know, outside of our profession. We enjoy the same things. Uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. He spent some time in Los Angeles and I don't really have a team for football. I love the Cowboys when I played in Dallas and kind of get to know some of those guys. But now becoming close with Travis, obviously I'm super hyped for him and Pat that they just won the Super Bowl. And uh, it really transpired from golf, which is funny because I never played golf. I just think it was the most boring game ever. And now ever since I stopped playing, uh, now, I'm, now I'm, I'm all in. I'm hooked on pickleball and golf. It's all I do pretty much. It's crazy. It's pathetic. Are you in I'm pretty good. I'm very good at pickleball, but I'm, I'm getting better at golf. What does it take to be a good? I know nothing about pickleball. Picture, what? picture like uh, tennis meets ping pong, where it's like closer. It's a smaller court, playing yeah. with like a wiffle ball. Um, obviously, like my length and my size and athleticism that helps, but it's it's you know hand eye coordination. If you're athletic and you've played some sports with like a ball, you you could learn pickleball pretty fast. Who would be good at that? Like, give me names of of athletes that would be real that you would guess are really good at pickleball. Like, there's tennis. Gronk. Gronk I've seen Gronk play. He's okay. Like Drew Brees plays. He's pretty. Good. He's pretty good. Have you seen Gronk play pickleball? He plays all the time. Ask Gronk about pickleball. He plays all the time. What do you mean? Like you've seen him physically? Like, like I've athlete, seen him physically. I don't know if I've seen him. I've, I've seen him. There's like these accounts on Instagram that kind of all, all go around and play with different athletes and celebrities. And Gronk has definitely been on there. Okay, who else? Drew Brees is a pickleball guy? Drew Brees is a big pickleball guy. Because a lot of teams, a lot of guys and ex-athletes now have equity. Like I own part of the Dallas MLP team. And like Mahomes owns. Larry Fitzgerald is pretty good at pickleball. Uh, there's a bunch of athletes that are now playing, and it's fun. It's a game for everybody. I can play with my wife. I can play with my parents. Uh, you know, we go to Kabul all the time, and where we have a place, it's it's a cult. Like it is a cult following, and this sport is growing. I think they're putting it in the Olympics, so it's it's blowing up. So Chandler, are you and I going to and by by me? I say just I'll help, and you'll I'll do all the work, and you'll do nothing, and just lend me your name. <laughs> Should we do like a fan duel pickleball invitational? Yeah, Should like me and you should play like Beetle and Shams and we would dominate them. No, no, I didn't say anything about playing. I'm thinking like we get all those people you're talking about, the Gronks, the Drew Breeses, this cult following. We go down to your place in Cabo. I think we're on. And, I think we're on to something here. I think that could be special. 
You're going to have time to do that, though. I hear you're having another baby. Oh, my gosh. Let me tell you something. I, I've had a great life. I've got some really cool things happen to me. Finding out that I'm having a boy, oof, it was the most special, most exciting time of my life, honestly. And we're, we're super stoked and we're super excited. Uh, what are you most excited for? Honestly, like having a girl, like I was set on, I thought I was going to have, you know, four or five girls and I thought I was just going to keep going. Then I have my daughter and I'm like, okay, there's no way I can love another kid more than her, another girl more than her. So that's a part of the reason why I want a boy. And it's just like as a guy, as an athlete, like I want to have a kid. I want to be his coach and I want to put him on the tennis court and basketball court and do things with him like that. And it's just, it, it, I don't know, it's just, I'm just so excited just to, I've seen how far my daughter's come. She's 17 months now and everything, how she talks and waddles around. It's just, it's the funniest, greatest uh, thing I've ever experienced. And I can't wait to do it with a, with a little boy that looks half like me and half like Haley. Sure. I mean, you're such a grown up now. Look I, at you. Look at me. Well, I'm still finding time to go to music festivals on psychedelics. So I, listen, I, I, I have a fine balance. Enjoy the mushrooms while you can, my friend. We'll talk a little pickleball. We'll have your son playing pickleball out there in the, in the 10th annual Parsons Gronk FanDuel Invitational. I figured it all out. We're on the show. Good luck to the Lakers, everybody. He says the Lakers are winning the NBA championship game. Send it out on Twitter. You check out the back on FanDuel with Michelle Beadle and Shams. Uh, <laughs> Notre Dame tight end Michael Mayer. One thing about him is he's known as the Kentucky Rob Gronkowski, the Kentucky Gronk. And he's known for that as, um, for one reason, guys, searching the hashtag NKY Gronk and you will see exactly what I mean. All right, from his days at Covington Catholic High School, that was in Park Hills, Kentucky, through his time in South Bend, Indiana, he has sported that number 87. Like our Gronk, who I'm watching, go to the, I mean, how many croissants are you gonna eat? Save me some! He's over there uh, hanging out as we're shooting something fun for FanDuel today. Listen to me, when he was there, from high school through his time in South Bend, he wore Gronk's number and he made life absolutely miserable for anybody trying to cover him, as you can see here. He's 6'5", 249, he's absolutely torn through secondaries. He's had over a hundred, or sorry, 1,600 yards, 16 touchdowns over the last two seasons. And Notre Dame, as we all know, proud history of stars at the tight end position. Michael Mayer, though, has more career catches than any of them. Right now, if you're looking at where he's projected to go, and I'm looking and listening to Jalen Jeremiah's of the world, he's projected to go in the late first round. And so while I've seen the Saints, the Bills, the Cowboys, those are the places brought up as potential destinations for Mayor's services. Listen, there's another team, I was gonna put it on the map here, shoot my shot here, uh, another team that lost its starting tight end in free agency, and they would keep NKY Gronk a little bit closer to home if, he ends up in Cincy. And here's Mayer at the Combine when asked about that potential possibility. It would, it would be awesome. You know, Joe Burrow throwing me that ball. Man, look, he's a, he's a national champion. Um, he's taking his team to the Super Bowl. And so, obviously, I'm trying to win ball games, man. I'm trying to go to the NFL. I'm trying to win ball games and win a Super Bowl. So, um, yeah, I want to be put in a good position for sure to be able to have a good quarterback throwing my way, be able to win some Super Bowls and, and things like that. So, um, you know, growing up 15 minutes from from – Day Stadium, man, it, it, it would be it would be awesome. There's no doubt about that. Are you guys kidding me? Are you kidding me? All roads lead to Cincinnati. You know what? I heard there's some manifestation going on. And to be honest, I'd love to see it. Michael Mayer to the Bengals, make it happen. Adding a tight end like him to this Bengals offense would be unbelievable. And he'd look great sitting in that row at UFC with Joe Burrow and Chase and all those guys hanging out, Sam Hubbard's. Uh, but seriously, wherever this guy ends up, this baby Gronk, I'm confident we're going to see an instant impact with the blocking and the catching and the offense and just the team pot, the Notre Dame product. One thing you need to know about Michael Mayer, we'll be back to wrap up the show and then I've got to work for 10 hours. Aren't there rules against this? Sounds like the Cardinals are getting wined and dined. They're entertaining multiple offers for that third pick. Schefter saying at least six teams have inquired with the Arizona Cardinals about trading up for the third on April 27th to kick off the NFL draft. Cardinals still mulling over whether to move, pick, or make it. They'd have to be, oh my gosh. Here's the thing that I think about. You can take whatever way you want. I look at it and I say, did Chicago make this move with the Panthers too early? Was it the best thing yeah, to do? Fair. And 
Cardinals should do, I'll, I'll let you take it. But what do you think about that? When I look at that as a Bears person, I'm like, well. I think it's a fair question, but. When you look at the return that the Bears got, it's also, you know, it's hard to be upset. Maybe they could have squeezed a little bit more out of a deal like this, but when you're able to land a couple first round picks and a and a superstar wide receiver like DJ Moore that you desperately needed for your young quarterback, uh, I, I can't be too upset about that if I'm a Bears fan. Yeah, what do you think about the Cardinals here? So they've got the third overall pick. I think they have seven. This might not be right, but I think they have seven other picks in the draft here they obviously have a new head coach they want to retool and rebuild around their quarterback what do you make of this yeah i mean there's a lot of uh there's a lot of rebuilding to be done when you lose guys like patrick peterson and chandler jones and jj watt year after year after year uh especially on that defensive side of the ball so they're in the dilemma right now with that third pick they're going to get the top defensive player on their board uh which is likely will anderson jr um, who's a phenomenal edge rusher. I know you talked about him last week. Um, so I, you have to weigh, are you willing to pass up on a guy like that to maybe pick up some more picks, knowing that you have some real overall retooling of this roster to do? Um, you know, I, I think with the teams that we're hearing, if there are that many teams involved in this bidding war, they might be able to get a heck of a return. And uh, I don't think they're just one piece away. You're not picking number three overall and and just – and being one piece away from being able to contend. And if I'm them, I'm not making the decision until literally Schefter is on stage in Kansas city, right? They have no reason they can wait and milk this thing until the clock starts on a trade or draft night. I'm very, it's like, well, first of all, the idea of them trading down and getting a, a, like a defensive piece is alluring to me. I think that that would be fun and good, but Hamilton also, who are the teams? six teams who yeah it's it's sounding we're hearing we're hearing like the titans the raiders who i know you brought up last week which would be a really interesting intriguing team the buccaneers potentially so uh, i don't know about the lions uh you know sitting there at six they're in a great spot to get to get a uh, one of the top defensive players so it's going to be somebody i think who's really quarterback needy All right. Well, we'll see how it shakes out. Don't take your time, Cardinals. All right. We'll talk to you.